Moving to our next candidate, we have Auroran tugenensis, also found about 10 years ago, but in this case from the Central Rift Valley in Kenya, from a site not unlike what we see right here in the Tugen Hills region of Kenya. Again, looking at our map, while Lake Chad is situated up here in Central Africa, the Tugen Hills are here in the Rift Valley in Kenya. Again, it's a topographically very variable region today with different seasonality associated with water and rainfall, but an area much more like what we're used to finding early hominins in, especially in East Africa. The specimen itself is represented by a number of fossils, including a few jaws, teeth, and parts of the postcranial skeleton, but the most significant fossil is probably this proximal femoral fragment. One of the features of this femur that have been used to argue that it's bipedal is that if we go to the femoral neck region here, and this is difficult to see in a picture, but on a cast of the specimen you can feel this, there's a little bit of a groove that we refer to as an obturator externus groove. This is a groove that's associated with the contact between a particular muscular tendon and the neck of the femur that come in contact actually during bipedal locomotion. This is a trait that we commonly see in human femora, but that isn't present at birth. It's a feature that emerges through development as humans engage in bipedal locomotion. The fact that this groove is present on the auroran femur has been used to argue that this is a femur that developed in the context of habitual bipedality. This is an organism that regularly engaged in bipedal locomotion. Other features that have been used about this femur to argue for bipedality are based on actually cross sections of the femoral neck and trying to examine the internal morphology of the femoral neck using CT and X-ray data. Now recall that when humans walk bipedally, we habitually load our femur in a single direction, basically. We flex our feet forward and we extend them behind us. And we pretty much go forwards and backwards and that's about it. So we're regularly putting force on our femur in one plane of action. So if we look at a cross section of the auroran femur, what we find, or what's been argued to be found, is that we have an asymmetrical distribution of bone. Basically, that if you look at the superior and inferior aspects of this cross-section, we see more distribution of cortical bone than if you look at the lateral and medial sides of this. This has been argued, again, as evidence for this kind of singular plane of action in which the femur is loaded in. So again, it's been used as arguments that this is a bipedal femur, or at least that this was a femur that was regularly engaged in bipedal locomotion. In contrast, recall that chimpanzees, because they climb, because they move bipedally, because they move quadrupedally, they move and engage their femur in a lot of different planes of action. And what we see if we look at the cross-section of the femoral neck in a chimpanzee is that we see a much more symmetrical distribution of bone. The cortical bone, rather than having this asymmetrical pattern, has a much more symmetrical distribution of bone, with no clear orientation having greater distribution of bone which means no particular orientation of the femur is designed to compensate greater kinds of force. So the argument for Auroran has been that this asymmetrical pattern of bone is again indicative of bipedal locomotion. But again, just like with Sahelanthropus, Auroran provides us with a sadly only a tantalizing few pieces of fossils at the moment. Again, more work, the discovery of more fossils would help confirm the morphology that we think we have with Auroran. So at the moment, it also represents a tentative hypothesis about a specific kind of specimen, a bipedal ape in this case, that existed sometime around 6 million years ago in East Africa.